Saigon, the ship heading straight for America. Here I am, Margaret Taylor, with memories of Boho County Roscommon packed in my bag. The waves seem to keep time as they slap against the hull, and I can't stop my toe from matching the rhythm or my ear from hearing Miss McLeod's reel on the wind. I'm looking to the future, Ma, for you're always said you can't go forward by going back unless you're step dancing. So I packed something for the journey. from his mother, Margaret Taylor Doyle, who immigrated to the United States in the 1930s. She raised her children to dance in the Fox Point neighborhood of Providence, Rhode Island, within range of the call of the gulls and the scent of salt spray from Narragansett Bay. Please, a big round of applause, Kevin Doyle! Yay! Thank you. I'm proud to be here today to carry on the heritage that was passed on down to me. And part of that heritage for me was growing up in the Irish community in Providence in the 1950s, early 60s. It was sort of like a natural progression for me to want to go do some style Irish step dancing. My mom was a beautiful step dancer, as it was said, but she also started teaching my sister Maureen at the age of six. And we danced together for 40 some years. And because we were surrounded by the Irish in Providence, it was always a place where there would be someone doing a party piece, someone doing a little step dance, playing a tune. But it was often said that if there was any good music being played, would someone please jump up and don't let that good music go to waste? <laughs> so we, we did that many times. And my mom taught us some of the best steps that I've ever had and uh, still do dance today, which you'll see now. I'm gonna invite my sister Maureen out and we're going to do one of the original dances my mom taught us. Maureen Doyle. Maureen
Well, that hometown, uh, that hometown neighborhood of Providence, Rhode Island, figures so largely in the music and the dance that we have to share with you today. Um, in the music that you just heard, all Ireland flute player Josh Kane was performing for you. And uh, in that neighborhood of Providence, a, a young fellow used to come through in the 1920s by the name of Michael Coleman on fiddle. And uh, it's said that when he stopped, he, he got to play for a wedding. And, and at the wedding, in addition to meeting the bride, he met the bride's lovely sister. And a bond and a marriage was formed, and on down through the story, along comes a young fella on flute who makes us proud indeed from his great, great grandmother, Rose Coleman Kane, all the way through to her nephew, Michael Coleman. For Josh Kane, a round of applause. The call of the gulls and the white-capped waves around Kevin's early neighborhood in Providence recall a similar Irish scene painted in poetic language. Dr. Scott Malloy of the University of Rhode Island reminds us of the state's historic role in the well-being of a most famous Irish poet. This up-and-coming young writer would find himself published in Providence. And in the words of William Butler Yeats, happy to have the Providence Journal as his only regular and certain paymaster. Mm. The White Birds by William Butler Yeats. Beloved, white birds on the foam of the sea, 